What's up, guys? Today, I'm going to be going over how you can become the best IGL that you can possibly be. If you are struggling mechanically but still want to place well in tournaments, then your best option is to become the IGL of your duo, basically meaning that you are the brains of your team. This means that you need to have a laid out plan of your game before you even load into your tournament or any sort of game. It all starts out with finding the right duo. If you're not the greatest fighter, then you preferably want someone that is good at fighting to pair up with you so you guys cancel out your weaknesses. It starts out with figuring out your plan for off spawn. You need to figure out where you're landing, how to win every time, and how to rotate out. If you're an up and coming player, then you probably want to land somewhere pretty uncontested, such as a split drop on the edge of the map. Many pro players such as Miro and Seti and Kami, they all landed split drops when winning their FNCS. I'll show some examples up on the screen right now for our current season in chapter 5. Some of these spots are really 50-50, meaning that it is a small area where if you get the gun first, you win. This gives you the best chance to be any pro player off spawn by making the fight fast and relying in on who has the best drop. I recommend getting a drop map for places like this because you can guarantee yourself a better drop. And you want to basically just practice at your spot to the point where you perfect it. You can test your ability out in scrims and I'm telling you right now, if you learn your spot from top to bottom, you will win majority of the time. After winning your off spawn fight or getting uncontested, you need to have a place for metal and rotating out. If your spot does not have metal already, then you need to either rotate somewhere near or play for your cash later on. Now you're in the mid game, which is technically the most important part of the game. Your decisions during this time can determine whether you make it to the end game stacked or you die early, wasting a bunch of time, gaining zero points. The mid game is every zone in between the first zone and the first moving zone. And three major things happen during this time. The forecast tower spawns, your cash spawns, and the island spawns and you can utilize all of these perks, but they are not necessary for your ability to win the game. Starting off with the forecast tower, this allows you to see the following zone, giving you information that other players don't have. If your spot is nearby this, then I recommend at least trying to see if you can get there. I will add that these spots are usually packed with players, so you need, you need to either be there first and claim it, or you need to clean up everyone by coming in and third partying. If you don't choose to do this, then it is fine, but another perk of going to the tower is getting storm surge which is very important in tournaments such as FNCS. If you do not go for Forecast Tower and you are not contested on spawn, then you need to get to a spot where you know players are going to be currently or are going to be in the near future. Surge is a part of the game where many teams struggle, and having enough or not is what differentiates a good and a bad IGL. So if you land at a split drop, you probably need to rotate into a more congested area of the map so you can get some snipes or some AR tags. Another opportunity for you to get Storm Surge and Metal is your Cache, which spawns in the third zone. In duos, your Cache gives you 400 Metal, which if you have conserved enough and farmed enough materials, should be enough until endgame. Your Cache spawns exactly the same amount of distance between you and another team, so this means that both you and the other team know exactly where this specific Cache is. If your Cache spawns near the edge of the zone, then that probably means that there are not going to be a lot of people around you, and you can fight the team for the cash with no real risk of third party. Now, the final event that happens during mid game is the loot island spawning in. This used to be very important for getting points, as claiming it gave you 15 additional points. But by the time of making this video, Epic have removed that feature. The island is still a good last resort for getting storm surge, good weapons, and materials leading into endgame. It also provides rifts all around it, so positioning next to one of those would be beneficial for your rotation as you can instantly start gliding to the next zone. And if you have surge, good mats, good heals, good weapons, you can easily just glide into center of zone or if you have forecast, glide into the center of the next zone to guarantee yourself in a really good position until moving zones start. Now that endgame has started, the whole dynamic of the game changes. Everyone is inside the smaller circle and being on the right layer will make or break your game. Being on low ground very early can give you a lot of refreshes into the future, but it can also get you killed very easily by not being aware and by everyone being able to see you up above. So finding a good layer where you can tarp or grapple out is the best thing you can do. To find out what a good layer is, you need to be looking through your cone and scanning where everyone is. If you see that zone starts pulling in a certain direction, you need to know what the safest route is before you actually start moving. Usually higher layers are safer because you have more space to yourself, but you also have the chance of getting looked at by height, which can grief you. So you need to make these decisions carefully. But essentially having a plan for where you are positioned in the later zones 
will separate you from the other players. As the circles keep getting smaller, you need to start tarping more and claiming more space. And as the Agile, you are responsible for leading a tarp, so you need to practice your skills prior to playing any sort of tournament. By being at the front of the tarp, you can call out to your teammates to look out for anyone breaking in or any potential eliminations they can pick up. And as you run out of materials, you need to be in communication with your teammate so they can drop you some materials or you guys can look together to find an elimination so you can get a refresh. Now, the last thing I just mentioned, communication. It's a very underrated topic in Fortnite Competitive. When there's so much chaos in Endgame, you and your teammate need to be on the same page. This helps if you guys can talk in a calm manner. Basically, chatting will not help at all. And that goes for the whole tournament. If you guys get mad at each other, the chances are you are not going to place well. As the IGL, you are going to be making the most decisions. And at the start, you're going to be making a lot of mistakes. But the thing is, if you and your teammate communicate well and are on the same page, those mistakes will be limited. Because if you guys play together and play off of each other, you will make less mistakes. And when you do make mistakes, you guys are there to support each other and eliminate anyone in your way.